In this video, I'm going to show you how to create effective summary measures to collapse repeatedly measured observations. When there are only two measurements per subject, the data may be analyzed using a simple summary values, such as difference ratio of a paired measurements, and or use regression techniques such as linear regression or logistic regression, and you can adjust baseline variable as a covariate in regression. The analysis becomes more complex when more than two measurements are involved. We may need to use a sophisticated analysis such as a mixed effect regression or GEE regression models to account for within patient coordination. And because failing to consider within patient coordination can impact on standard error of the parameter estimate resulting in biasing p-value affecting on the power of the analysis. So I do have um, lectures on mixed effect model and GEE and although before we talk about those complex methods and I want you to know there is actually the simpler method called the summary measures approach in which we collapse repeated measures data into a single observation per subject and so that we can avoid a complex repeated measures analysis. So let's look at this data and these data are measured on 12 different patients. So each graph indicate change on the blood glucose. So these are blood glucose measured over time. Okay, So x-axis is a time in hours. So for example, this graph show change in blood glucose over hours for subject 1. So let's consider what is a most proper summary measures if you were to collapse these repeatedly measured observations into one number okay, per patient. And of course that is depend on your study hypothesis. And your question is, is the overall value of the outcome variable overall glucose uh, the same in different groups and then you might use just a mean or summation of all repeated measures and or area under the curve types measurements may be useful and how about uh, if your question is is the maximum response different between groups and then you might uh, use maximum value uh, per patient and then compare the maximum value between the different patient groups. Okay. And or if your question is, is the rate of change of the glucose different between groups, then what you can do is you perform single linear regression and within each patient and then look at the slope. So slope is a change of glucose per one hour increase in time. So that provides average rate of increase in glucose per hour for each patient. Okay, so each patient have a different different regression slope. So you can compare regression slopes between different groups of patients. And how about you if your question is is the eventual value of the outcome variable the same between groups and you don't really care uh, what happened glucose level in between and you want to know eventual value and then you can use value at the end of the study and or if your question is is the response in one group delayed related to the other and then you might use time to reach a particular value as a summary measure okay? such as half-life of drug and that's the summary measurement. The data involved measurements of some sort of dental growth measures on 10 girls and 17 boys at age 8, 10, 12, 14. Okay? So for each boy or girl and they measure four times over uh, every two years of a time interval. And we are interested in comparing this growth between boys and girls. Okay, so we are going to create the summary measures on this uh, data set. And before we talk about how to create summary measurements, an important thing we need to know is what type of data format 
uh, each summary measured require. Okay? And there are two types of data format. One is horizontal. Horizontal data format include each boy or girl within a single line. So this line is from uh, a girl uh, whose ID is 2. And then dental growth measures are measure taken on age of 8, 10, 12, 14. Okay? So each outcomes are created under a different variable name. Okay. On the other hand, uh, we can put the data in this longitudinal format. In longitudinal format, single subject have multiple lines. And so our uh, gross measurements are included in one big column. And then you have an indicator for age. So you know this first line is a measurement from ID number 2 at the age of 8 years. And the second line is a gross measurement and from the same subject ID number 2 and at the age of 10. Okay. So first four lines are from ID number 2 subject and then uh, second sets of four lines are from uh, another patient, another subject. Okay. And if you want to compute mean, uh, you can do either of horizontal or longitudinal data format. For AUC, you need a horizontal data format. And max or minimum, you can do either format. Time to some specific value, you need a longitudinal format. And rate of change, uh, which is regression slope, you need a longitudinal format. When you want the last value as a summary measure, and the measurements interval are different for each patient, then you need the longitudinal format. If you have the same number of repeat as this data set, then you can just grab last column. So you can use horizontal format. So next few slides, I will show you how to transform horizontal data set into a longitudinal format. Okay, so we start with this horizontal data format. You go to data restructure and then keep the default of a fast choice. Okay, and then leave it the default of a first choice. Okay. And then here, and we need to let SPSS know what is the ID variable. So we do use selected variable and then put the ID in this box. And in this box, uh, we are going to give a name uh, for outcome variable. So I'll just put gross. And then you simultaneously choose these four uh, repeated measured variable and then put it in this box. And then six is a fixed value, so it doesn't change within patient, and you put it in the fixed variable box. And you click next and leave it as a default and next. And then here, uh, SPSS is asking you how do you want to call the indicator variable and specifying time. So I put age here. And then you're ready to finish. Right? So now SPSS has just created the longitudinal format. So now age variable indicate 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we know 1 is age 8, 2 is age 10. 3 is 12 and 4 is 14. So we are going to assign age to correct age value. So we go to transform and record into same variable. And we put the age on the variable box and click on old and new values. Old and new values. And 1 is convert to 8. Click add. And 2 convert to 10. Click add. 3 convert to 12, again click add, and 4 convert to 14, okay, and click continue and okay. So now let's check the data set. And then, so age now indicate correct age, right? So now we have a longitudinal format. Let's save this with some name. 
actually I have created many of these. Next, I will show you how to transform longitudinal data to horizontal data. The key to analyze repeated measure is you are able to your key to analyze repeated measure is if you can go back and forth between longitudinal to horizontal data because uh, different summary measures require different data format. So let's transform longitudinal data to horizontal data now. Okay, so we have a longitudinal data and each patient's observations are insert uh, included in multiple lines. Go to data restructure and now we click middle option okay. and next and identify a variable would be ID and index variable will be H. Okay. And then we click next and next and finish. Okay. So now you transform longitudinal data into horizontal data set. Okay. So using horizontal data and we are going to compute max uh, and mean and summation variable. So you go to compute variable okay. and then uh, let's create a max first. Okay, and max over these four variables. And if you go when you go to uh, if you when you click on function group and click on all and you can see uh, there are many functions you can use and we can do max, we can do mean and median, minimum and so on. So if you want to do max and we just put all these variables in parentheses. So you just create a new variable called max which reflect maximum values among these four measures. All right. So let's do the same thing using a longitudinal data. Okay, this is the longitudinal data. So if you have a longitudinal data, in order to create a mean or max or summation, you go to data aggregate and then include ID under break variable box and then you put the growth under summary of variable box and then default is mean. So by doing this, SPSS will create new variable which is mean of this growth variable within each ID. So we want to do mean and we also want to do minimum or maximum first value, last value. You can do sum, median, mean, and standard deviation. You can also compute percent of times uh, gross measurements is above or below certain value or within some range or outside of some range. So you can you can also do fraction as well. So we want to do max and continue. So now this function changed to max and then if you want to do sum and you can keep creating a variable. So just change this to sum. So we're creating mean max sum of growth and so you will see three new variables in your data set and then here this is the options to tell SPSS how you want to save this new variable and I usually create a new variable called summary uh, or aggregate uh, give any names you like and then uh, click OK and then if you go to this newly created data set and now you have one line per patient and for each patient and then you have mean of growth and max of growth and summation of those repeated measures. And then now I realize we forgot to create variable for sex because we need that variable and because we are going to compare these uh, new outcome variables, some of the measure between men, uh, boys and girls. So uh, let's go back to longitudinal data set and let me do it again. Um, sex doesn't change with impatient, so you can do first, last, minimum, maximum, uh, whichever choices. And let's, since default is first, so let's keep it as a first. And we are going to create again this data set again. 
So you go to summary. So now we have variable for six uh, kept in the data set. So now I created the horizontal data set, one line per patient. And uh, summary measured we created are three. One for mean, one for max, and one for summation. And so for each summary measurement as an outcome, and we can now we can perform Mount Whitney U test to compare uh, average, for example, um, compare average mean of gross measurement between boys and girls. So you go to non-parametric independent samples, and we put the growth mean under test field and in groups. Uh, sex underscore first. This is the same as sex variable under groups. And then you run OK. And p-value is 0 0.009. So this indicate average gross measurements are different between uh, boys and girls. Okay. And we repeat this for other outcome variable. So if you want to compare max average max value of gross measurement between boys and girls, you just put the gross max. And you can actually put more than one outcome variable. So let's put the summation of gross measurement as well. And so now uh, there are statistical difference between boys and girls for both uh, gross sum and also gross max uh, values. By creating within patient summary measure, you can eliminate repeated measures within the subject, therefore you can avoid a complex analysis. And so your analysis is now become as simple as Mount Whitney U test to compare uh, one continuous variable between two groups.